September 23rd, 2024. Guys, you're looking at an update that came in four hours and 23 minutes ago at 4 p.m. Central, Monday, today, September 23rd. It is now 8.23 p.m. here. What you're looking at is storm surge, and this, this again is four hours, almost four and a half hours old. And that storm is strengthening, you can tell by the radar, but I'm going to start with this just to wake some people up, okay? Now, what you're looking at, I can, let me pull it back out. Of course, it's Florida. This is Tallahassee, Panama City's right there. And you can see some blue areas, a slight yellow areas, and I'm going to show you the color code also. But if the storm drifts any further to the left, this is going to change dramatically. But right here in the Big Bend area, which is south of Tallahassee, right there, you've got uh, three different warnings. But the gray area is a shoreline. You see that? And what they're doing is putting in a color code of how far at this point, four and a half hours ago, looking at the strength of the storm then, we we're, were going to be dealing with up to nine foot of storm surge in this area. Again, if this thing moves to the left, this nine foot and seven foot uh, surges will move into the Panama City area. But look how far they extend as it goes now. Look at this, guys. So they're watching the entire area, but just the strength of the hurricane, even if it comes directly right into here, all of this can happen because it's so big, so strong, it's going to be throwing a lot of energy in all of this part of Florida on their west coast will be in the northeast quadrant of the storm, the strongest part. So we go down here, and let me pull this up just a little bit, guys, so you can see the color coding. Oh, wrong way there. Let's go back here. All right, red is greater than 9 foot. Orange is 6 feet above ground or greater than 6. Yellow is greater than 3. Blue is greater than 1 foot. Now, what you've got to realize is that if the if the tide is high, you can add a foot or a foot and a half to that. That and that height would put you in the red at over ten feet. That does not count the wave height. Okay. Anyway, red areas nine feet or above, orange six, yellow three. And that way we can go in here and take a look at it. Blue is at least a one foot above ground or greater. And this starts way down in South Florida, going up into the areas very quickly into the yellow, which is greater than three feet. Here's some orange and red areas. This is Fort Myers Beach area. And you're getting back into the greater than six foot, some uh, nine foot sections. Check this out. And this thing is so strong, again, it's going to be moving up the East Coast. And the reason you've got so many red areas from Tampa... And further north, let's pull in here, St. Pete, all up into Tampa Bay. They're already looking at nine feet above. Again, depending on the time it comes in, you're going to have a high and low tide every day. Then you need to look at that right now. If you're on the Florida coast, just go to Google, type in what is, say, Fort Myers Beach. What is the tide for the next few days? This is going to be coming through on the 26th. So, you, again, you, if they're saying it's going to be up a foot and a half or two foot, then you can add that to the storm surge, again, plus the waves. Another thing that does happen is full moons, things like that, will bring the tide up. They call some of them the king moon and all of that. Remember, it was, we've seen it in Miami, and it just depends. But I don't think we're going to be in a full moon. I think it's kind of uh, going back or waning moon right now from the... Uh, full moon we just had but let's go back to this so all of tampa bay look and you think about it it's kind of in a bad place because everything pushed from the northeast quadrant of the hurricane spinning this way is going to be trapped into these areas so all of, and just look guys all of this area look out here this is st petersburg st pete beach everything is either nine foot or greater than six foot. Now, do you want to go down and stay in one of these places? I mentioned it earlier, I think, that if you call now, and you're very wise, and you've got your summer savings 
tied up in a condo down here for a few days uh, from the 26th to whenever they get the lights back on. If you call now, they make an either reschedule it, book you into a room further north if they're part of, again, something like a, a Holiday Inn or something bigger than that, or they can uh, reschedule for that same area. But, guys, we don't, you don't know when the power will be back on, and neither does any booking agency. So either I would get it rescheduled, again, if Holiday Inn, they got one further north, take it, and it doesn't matter the brand, or cancel it altogether. This is not going to be a nice place to be because they're going to evacuate it. They're not going to let people back in until the power's back on, and it's safe to get in there. They're going to keep tourists out. Look at that. Let's just move on up a little further. Now, if we head north from Clearwater, St. Petersburg, and Tampa in this area, it doesn't get any better. And somewhere in this area is where they're saying it's going to hit. Now, guys, none of us know exactly because we saw Michael turn right so quickly. We've seen all of this happen before. And the misery that Katrina had, uh, brought with it, they say it was a Cat 3. It got into a, a Cat 5 in the Gulf and slowed down to a Cat 3. But, again, we were having 120-mile-an-hour winds up into central Mississippi two hours from the beach. This thing is building up in the right time of the year with the heat set up, the Gulf waters, the temperature they are, and everything else is happening. But it not only, like I said, you come up through there, here is Tallahassee. Let's pull this up a little further. You'll you, you guys in this area know where it's at. This is uh, the, uh, let's see what it is, Tallahassee, a St. Mark's Historic Railroad Trail. All of this is in here. I'm not going to change the map. It's, you can see all the islands here. Getting all the way to Panama City. Now, if it does not move to the west, to the left, and it does not increase what they're saying would be a Cat 3, then this is what you'll be getting here. Here is Panama City, Panama City beaches out here, Lower Grand Lagoon, and you're in the blues and the yellows through this area. And that, again, is the yellows is greater than three foot, the blues are greater than one foot above ground. Remember your tides and the height of the waves incoming. Let me back it out again. If it moves to the east, guys, you know I'm going to be on top of it. Be careful of it. But the most dangerous thing right now is the entire west coast of Florida because, if again, if it comes in and is trapped into this cup south of Tallahassee, everything on the side is going to eat the northeast quadrant of a very powerful storm. Now, the, they have not updated the speed past the Cat 3 with Cat 4 gust. Let's take a look at a little bit about that. But this is the most important part. Guys, this should wake anybody up that is pretending in their mind they're going to do a vacation in this area. And it's going to come in Thursday, tomorrow's Tuesday. And it's going to maybe take weeks to clean up the mess. Now, this update's been out an hour and 34 minutes at 8 p.m. Eastern. Not much has changed here, but maybe a little bit of drift to the left. You notice that, and that's where it's going to be dangerous where all that storm surge, if it moves to the left. And if it does, guys, that does not mean it's going to let up along the uh, Tallahassee area from Tampa up above that because you're still in the northeast quadrant. This thing is very large, but, again, the wind speed is still predicted in this uh, major area, again, Cat 3 or above, at 100 knots which is a Cat 3 or 120 knot gust, which is a strong Cat 4 gust. And that's the root rippers right there. Then plowing up through Georgia, Alabama, moving over Tennessee, Kentucky, averaging into Illinois. I don't know if it will make it this far north because there's high pressure setting up that's going to bend this thing around. Now let's take a look at the satellite over the Caribbean Sea. Here's Cuba, Jamaica, the Grand Caymans, here is the Yucatan parts of uh, South America. But guys, I've got it set at uh, what's called day cloud phase, and it's turning into the red infrared because the sun is setting. 
But again, the light colored blue and green areas are your surface clouds really close to the surface. And this is the higher clouds. A couple of things to watch here is it looks like, I'm pretty sure the center of rotation is right in here. Grand Cayman's just got or and still getting the uh, northeast quadrant of this tropical system. Now, now it looks like it's still blowing the tops to the north. Will that affect the direction of the rotation? It's still at the bottom as we pull this forward. Right in here, it still looks like it's making this approach into the gap. Now, we'll know in the later updates and in the first ones that's coming out in the morning a couple of things from the computer printouts, the exact location, the speed, and the uh, direction of the storm. That's going to be important because as soon as it gets into this area, it's going to be, again, it comes in right into the Cuba, Yucatan area at the end of the day on the 25th. Today's the 23rd. But from there, it gets into a powerful storm, it looks like, just north of there. And in that period of time, from on the 26th, it's already ashore in Florida or wherever it ends up coming in. Now, I'm going to switch this to what's called the natural color. What it actually is is, again, the same thing we saw before, but your white clouds are near the surface and your blue clouds are near the top. And they, it really cuts this thing out when it gets nighttime, but it gives you a good idea and increase the speed of where the center circulation is. And this thing's starting to wrap up. We'll look at the infrared as we get near the end of the video. But uh, Cuba, Yucatan. You're going to get a lot of rain, and guys, in the western tip of Cuba, northeast quadrant, you're really going to get hard, hit hard with wind and rain, even if it shoots the gap. Now, let's go to infrared, and you can see that uh, the storms are starting to wrap up. You can see the rotation right there. Grand Caymans are sitting here. You've got uh, Cuba and uh, the Yucatan there. A lot of moisture, a lot of strength in here. Grand Caymans, you got, you're getting some wind and uh, tropical system winds in here. Look at that. Guys, it's about to get in warmer water. I think they're still calculating it at, at least one notch on the hurricanes. I think it's going to come in as a four, very close to Cat 5 in the gust. But we will know tomorrow, the 24th. A lot more because it's going to be approaching this area. Nothing to it impeded at that point except possible wind shear and uh, any type of front moving in from the top as far as high pressure. Now let's back this out for just a moment. I've been doing videos about the movement of the tilt of the earth, of the sun going down a little further north, and we saw the report the other day that uh, they know the tropical convergence zone at that time had moved 152 miles to the north. Now, look here at the hurricane that's uh, south of Mexico, but moving north on you, almost due north, and it looks like hurricane strength. And what a, a storm will do is reach for the strongest area of the inter con, uh, con national convergence zone or the intertropical convergence zone. And it looks like that's why this is moving north. Just saying there's a lot going on, but it gives you the size of the storm compared to the northern or northwestern section of the Caribbean. And it looks like you guys in Kentucky have been getting a little bit of rain a little further north than that. But it doesn't look like it's very strong at this point. And guys, here in northern Mexico, you're starting to pick up some storms. Here, going into the Rockies, some light moisture, but I've noticed some colder air moving in. But this right here, guys, if it doesn't get some wind shear blowing this thing up, the tops off of this thing, we're going to have a major problem. Now, this is very interesting, and it backs up what we're talking about, about that 152-mile north movement of the convergence zone and how the Sudan was getting... In some areas, 600 times the amount of rain they would get in a year in just a day. 600 times. Can you imagine that? You saw the devastating floods. But this, again, uh, nine days ago, September the 12th, and this is coming from NASA's MODIS satellite, depicts vegetation extent and the green coloring over Africa on September the 12th, 2024, versus going back to the same day one year ago, 
nine days ago in 2023. Vegetation reaches much further north in 2024 in places like Niger and Chad and is more lush, darker green just above the equator in places like the Central African Republic. Now, let's just move this. This is 2023, and that's the average. Now, this convergence zone moves a few miles north and south every year, never to this extent. Now, let's go, and you'll notice the vegetation here, and I measured this on Google Maps, and this movement is about 150 miles. Let me slide this back, going from normal to just look in this area right here, going back to 2023 now, nine days ago, look, moving through here. And that's a big deal, guys. You're talking about deserts that have been here for thousands of years and maybe more than that. But again, just I'll, I'll put a link to this particular graph. Again, it's from NOAA. Check it out. Again, we're going from 2023 here to 2024. Places that have never seen this moisture and vegetation. And it made some of this area a little more lush. Look right down here as I pull back to 2023 along the coastline. Pretty barren. See that? In one year. And the movement north is unreal. Look along the edges of the Red Sea there. Not much. Just here in the southern tips. Now look how far north that is. The planet is changing. That's going to have a lot to do with hurricanes and everything else, the coolness in the winter, the heat of the summer. But I just wanted to point that out, guys. We're watching this. You're going to get an update pretty early in the morning, and we'll see what the changes are. We're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.